Welcome to Stargate SG-1 for the first time still, not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken and I'm watching Stargate SG-1 for the first time. And I'm Brent Allen and I'm watching Stargate SG-1 for the 47th time. Jeff and I are two veteran Star Trek podcasters who have joined forces to bring you a show called Babylon 5 for the first time. And we had so much fun doing that show. We said, let's do it again with a completely different show that honestly, a lot of you guys out there said, we want to watch that one too. So whether this is your first time or your 47th time through the gate, we invite you to come along with us as we give SG-1 that for the first time treatment. For me, since this is my first time watching this, I'm just going to be watching, experiencing the show as it unfolds, and I'm going to bring all of you with me to relive your first viewing experience as well. And you know what, Jeff? I'm going to be doing, this is actually something I did both for, for the first time, but also for Beam Me Up, my other show. I'm, I'm doing the Beam Me Up for the first time treatment on my side. I'm watching the show for the 47th time, but for the first time, I'm intentionally watching for what we call those Star Trek-like messages, those sci-fi messages uh, where they they kind of pop up through the show, you know, things that hold up a mirror to society and kind of slap us in the face a little bit, things that give us hope that things are going to be better in the future or maybe just even show us how to be better humans to each other. And since this, Brent, is still, it's not a Star Trek podcast, no. we're bringing over, we're importing from the Babylon 5 for the first time the game that everybody loves, The Rule of Three. This game limits us to no more than three references to Star Trek per episode. That's it. Three. One of those three. No substitutions, exchanges, a refund. <laughs> do you know why people love this game so much? I do know why. They love when we make those references and they hear this sound. <laughs> They really do. It. <laughs> it's, it's, we get, it's so pleasing to everybody's ears. Is we get a mean. substantial amount of feedback <laughs> through multiple channels. <laughs> well, guys, uh, along with the rule of three, uh, we are we are expanding that particular game. Uh, anytime we make a Babylon 5 reference, you're actually going to hear this sound. Oh, yes. And those will be unlimited. All right. I'm excited to get into this episode. This is Cold Lazarus. And mm -hmm. I I really like in thinking about it over the week, I figured this was going to be like going to an ice planet. You're going to find someone who's dead and frozen. It's really frozen caveman lawyer through the gate is yep. what it's going to be. Yep. So um, we'll find out how close or far away I am. What cool facts have you got for me on this one? Well, j nothing, nothing super huge. Uh, it is, this is the seventh episode, original air date, August 29th, 1997. Um, Jeff, I do have to ask before we go into this though. All right. What do you, you still right now, as we record this, have not seen the original movie, at least not in 30 some odd years. Yeah. It's been a very long time. Yeah. yeah okay. What do you remember about the character of Jack O'Neill, maybe that either you watched or that I have told you from the movie? Like, who was Jack O'Neill? Who was he when we first met him? What What's his story? What's his deal? What do you remember? So, Kurt Russell, right, played him yep. much more um, stiff, kind of stoic in his portrayal. Yep. And his kid, his son, didn't he get... Didn't he die from O'Neill's gun? Like he was playing with the gun or something? Pretty much. Yep. That's, yeah. And that's why he was all stiff. Like he was in the movie, he was rather suicidal. Okay. Um, you know, and and he was he was supposedly you remember and they they touched on this a lot in the in the pilot episode of SG one. He was supposed to blow up a bomb on the other side. Specifically, he was staying behind. It was a suicide mission for O'Neill. Yeah. yeah. And okay. thanks to Daniel Jackson and the, and Scara, if you remember Scar, mm -hmm. like thanks to the kids on Abydos and and Daniel Jackson, it kind of pulled O'Neill back from the brink, and uh, he wound up going home, obviously, and they blew up raw ship with the the bomb. So, uh, okay. and then here we here we find ourselves. So, I just want you to keep what you know of O'Neill in mind as we go through this episode. I would just say, uh, hey, and grab some popcorn. And make this as light as you possibly can. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little nervous about you this. You should be. You should be, Jeff. You should be. I just, you know, have you had a good day today? 
Eh, it's been a day. I yeah. You said a couple things, and I want to I want to take care. Well, we need to take care of ourselves, right? That's yep. always important. But yep. I also want to take care of the people watching or listening to this. Jeff, can you mute me on your side? Like, can you mute me from? Yeah, t- there you go. Uh, so hey, listen. If you guys are watching this, you haven't seen this show in a while, or maybe you've never seen this one. Uh, this one deals with the traumatic fallout of what happens when a parent loses a child uh, and they feel their own personal guilt. Um, so. Uh, just so you guys know, that is where the territory where this episode's going into. Take care of yourselves. If maybe this is one you should uh, wait for next week to jump into us. So, uh, but that being said, Jeff, you're, I'll certify you as being okay. And, and if not, then we'll, we'll catch you <laughs> as right? it goes through. Okay. Hey, listen, what we're about to do is Jeff and I are going to watch this episode for the first time right now. We're going to get into it. Uh, we're going to do our, this will be like our reaction. This is like podcast slash reaction video all mushed together, mixed up. So uh, that's what we're doing. And if you would like to see the full unedited reaction, head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Babylon 5 first, because that's where we're funneling everything through right now. Well, if you're listening to the audio version of this on a podcasting app like Good Pods or iTunes, Spotify, any of those good things, I'd mention Stitcher and Google, but apparently all the other apps are going at a had a business at the time that we record this thing, but make sure that you stick around for this because what's going to happen is you're not going to join us for the episode. We're just going to skip ahead and you're going to hear us talk about the episode. So there's going to be this weird little break and then you'll be like, oh my gosh, that was such a great episode. If you want to check it out, right, go to our YouTube, head to our Patreon and see what it is. And when we come back, I'm going to share my first time reaction to this. And Brent is going to lay on us any of those sci-fi messages that he happened to pick up. So what do you say we start this bad boy? Let's do it. Because for you guys here at YouTube or on Patreon, we're going to watch it with you right now. Tilking his sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Legit badass. What do we got here? This is probably like the most TOS original Star Trek like set I've seen in the entire show. Totally. Like even the sky in the backdrop. Yep. Yeah. Align your chakras, (laughs) Colonel O'Neill. Right? Nobody's compensating for anything there. It does look a little phallic. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. He's in his head. And he doesn't seem too disturbed by it. They're not even recording in HD right now. Like they're not even filming it. Like this is just, I'm not sure if this is digital or if this is actual film that they're doing it on, but. So he was able to hear them. He went off and is that him? Yeah. Well, he picked up the gun. He he physically has picked up the gun. No one is acting like he's missing. So he must be visible. So yeah, just just to, to help you sort that, he is he is physical. He is corporeal. Like they can see him, touch him, interact with him, talk to him, whatever that is. And yeah. then there's the other thing, whatever is left on the planet, still chilling in the sand. For for spoiler reasons to the episode, I can't tell you which is which. You know. Since we didn't find them anywhere else on the planet, it's likely that they were gathered and put there. What? Early Greek cultures valued crystal and gemstones, perhaps the pit of some religious or ceremony. I wonder if something was living in that crystal, the way it keeps showing it watching. The report doesn't mention any local population. And like it There's no evidence of it developed. cloned him? SG-1 is on stand down until your next mission comes up. Dismissed. I think somebody would be checking. Like, this is very out of character for him. No quips, no nothing. Somebody should be like, you okay, Jack? Yeah. What's going on? That is a fair assessment that I, too, am surprised people aren't like. So right now, he's not like this is some creature that was in the crystal. I'm, 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 I'm guessing this has cloned him. And through contact, right, he's able to kind of experience these emotions, these latent emotions and, and, thing, and memories that are on the physical Fair things. Enough. There's some touch thing that he's got. You're, you're very astute, Jeff. Been doing so, this for and, a while. So. And Listen, no I mean, it's crazy. exactly what you're supposed to understand Locked at this point. Goodbye, Sam. Bye. He can talk. Jack seems very mm-hmm. focused. Yeah. I didn't even know he was married. Oh, he isn't. Um, he was, but they separated after his son died. Fair. The episode's telling you everything that I told you, so I guess I didn't uh-huh. say it. Yeah. Sam's like, step away, disengage, just touch the sore spot. This isn't going to be awkward. Hello, Sarah. Sarah Connor. <laughs> Practice it a few times. You'll get it right. And I'm just going to turn up the creepy. Something wrong. 
I think it's the ignition. But you didn't come about the car. Yes, I did. It's a beautiful car. No, I need to find Charlie. Is he here? He doesn't. Because mm, that's not in the memories, Nature. right? It's important, sir. Charlie! Don't! Work on me. I feel like she should know him well enough, too, to be like, Don't right? Understand. Something is although, off with you. Although he's coming and say, like, she should call for help because. If this were Jack, he's clearly. In That's a what place. I mean. That's what yeah. I mean. Like she, this is not like it's getting not mad at him. Her is your way of trying to win a woman's heart. It's a stupid one. Anyone ever tell you that? That's a good dad I right think there. You just did. <laughs> you know what I love here, Jeff? Is is like that's obviously his old father-in-law, right? Like, mm -hmm. like there is still some familiarity. There is still some like we're not enemies. I don't hate you. Like yeah, you know. Um, I, you, you do can, you do get the sense that there's a past relationship here. Yeah, you know, and there's you can still be friendly, have a yeah, little yeah, compassion, yeah. like yeah. it's still okay. Yeah. After last night's yeah. rally, and oh, this won't turn out badly at all. No, not not all marriages end like that. So, right. You know. I like the crystals poster on the back wall. Mm. Like he's. I guess it's her way of keeping right. around a while. I thought it would find Charlie. Look around, you still might. He's gone. It's so sick. Is Charlie about ready? Yeah, he was running around here a few minutes ago. Oh, wow. Charlie! I have to get back to the Stargate. Back to what? Stargate. <laughs> Apparently the crystals don't know anything about classified information. Right. Big round metal. What's wrong? The way it feels Crying and expresses emotions wrong. is really interesting. What's with you? What do you mean? Like it seems it's very it's factual, it's but he's still very compassionate in a so weird way. Mm -hmm. Holy Hannah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Help us. Help us. Spinning up. No one's too bad. It Shut the iris. Trying to communicate with us. I didn't think anyone was too back. No one is. Yeah, I don't think I would be responding so. Oh, that's weird. Nobody. Would. There is a guy who calls himself a god who is trying to kill you. So. Okay. I like how they load up the gate room like this. Where's Even the though they know they have the iris. Remote. Here. Yeah, well, just is, close it. Like, Heads up, although he did say somebody used the 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 code. When the oh, did he say that? Yeah, yeah. It's the real Jack. What are you guys doing leaving without me? That's a very on brand response. The They're orders. like, oh, mm -hmm. who are you? What do you mean, who am I? What the heck's going on here? Good question. Take him into custody. I get it. Right, that's weird and whatever, but mm -hmm. also like someone needs to be doing that math. Like this guy's acting on brand. Right. Other guy wasn't. I thought if I could bring Charlie back through the Stargate. Just the shut up there. about that, would you? Charlie is gone, Jack, and we should be talking about us and what happened and not. It's almost like she still wants a relationship yeah. with him. Uh huh. It really yeah. feels like that. We gotta get you to the hospital. That's probably not a good idea. Hello? Okay, look at that. Hello. What are you? Energy. Unity. You would describe me thus. If you thought that your entire race was destroyed by the ghouls as punishment for harming one of them, what would you do if you thought it was going to happen again? Right? So now it's going to try and understand is what it's doing. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hoping, right? It's also, I'm going to try and infiltrate Sir, and get you before you get us. The other guy. But that doesn't seem to be the motivation. I mean, okay, yeah, you, you definitely problem. still got to know, is, is some there some malevolence the here? In the lab? Right. Or Whatever the energy inside the crystal is, it's starting to decay. Nuclear radiation? It's not constant and the amounts are not dangerous. But if O'Neill, if it starts breaking down like the energy in the crystals and it's more powerful than what we have here, then anyone nearby could get a lethal dose of radiation. If that's true, we have a very serious problem on our hands. Let's hope it's not. Also uh, might be easier else. to find him. I've been thinking about where it went. Sir, it was in your locker looking through your personal stuff. Pictures of your family. Let's go confuse Sarah all the more. I think you'll have to leave that here. 
I have seen your world. I will need it. <laughs> Can't let you take your weapon, right. Tilk. You, all of you, will be operating... So this will be Tilk's first so time leaving the facility, yeah? Anything that reveals the existence mm -hmm. of the SGCR, the Stargate. Well, on Earth. I almost wonder... Yes, I, it is. He saw those pictures. Mm -hmm. Felt the love mm. for Charlie, and he's like, this is what my people need. He died. To bring us back, so he needs to bring. He feels like if he takes Charlie there, they can recreate that energy. Jeff, what's happening to you? Interesting I thought. Get to the Stargate. Can we do that? Somebody go do something. He's still doing his thing. Mm -hmm. Dude, they were super. She was super vulnerable with Fake Jack. Like this is weird. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know it's weird yet, but the second right. she can do that math. Daniel doesn't often call Jack Colonel. No. No. <laughs> well, it's Jack. Right? Yeah. He's a civilian. He can call him one of those heggy ones, you know? It's all right. Hmm? It's me. I'm not going to hurt you. Okay. Please, stay back. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. I hmm. do not. It's the second time Jack's been thrown back against the wall. By this dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I understand now. Your deepest pain was not the physical injury I had caused. Your pain comes from an empty place in your heart. Where he Jack wanted to take him back to heal Jack. I thought if I could bring Charlie to you, it would make to share the thing. This dirty pool right here, Jeff. Yeah. This is when if you're the friends, you're like, hey, we're gonna... Yeah, we'll give you a minute here. Just as I cannot yeah. change the day that the gold destroyed my world. The radiation's still low, but I don't know for how long. Yeah, maybe let him have a minute. Sarah. She should be... Full on freaking out. I'd throw up. You know what I mean? Like that's not Charlie. I can't even imagine losing a kid, but I don't think I'd even be able to stand up. Mm -hmm. To the Stargate. Yeah. He's like, crap. You can't tell anybody about that though. Yeah. Listen, I will kill you if you say anything. Right. Keep the lights on. I'll be back. I'm glad that they're going to get, like, energy dude home before he just, like, explodes or wisps away or melts or whatever. Because usually that would be it. Like, yeah, he would yep. just sort of go off. At the end of the we didn't get back in time. Sorry. All right, Jeff, we are back having just watched. I mean, we finished 30 seconds ago. Cold Lazarus. Uh, I warned you ahead of time that this was an emotional episode. Talk to us about it. What are your kind of immediate reactions uh, having seen this episode now? We've known these people, what, six? This is our sixth episode we've watched. Mm -hmm. Seven if you count the first one twice. Right. Yeah. In this many episodes, they've created, they've let us create this relationship with the characters where we got to laugh a little bit tilk and you know kind of is like oh haha ha, they're gonna watch rock music and all the horrible news i mean we probably weren't supposed to laugh at it but you know you can look at it and it's kind of a trope you know of how horrible our world is and we can laugh with that we can um feel excited as daniel and and sam are discovering you know the the, the what these crystals are and finding new life but more than that like in seconds, I knew that wasn't Jack that came yeah. through. You know, yep. I picked up on that. Yep. And then to walk us through his loss and his trauma in that way, mm -hmm. if that was just, we're going to tell this story with a side character, guest star that we brought on, oh, I'd be touching or whatever. But like, that was deep. 
they did such a great job in taking us on an emotional ride to for us for Jack to start processing his, his, his trauma, you know, um, my first big note that, that I made. So fake Jack energy, Jack Mm -hmm. goes to his ex-wife's house. I'm guessing used to be their house because it's still got Charlie's room and he's looking through the stuff and he's starting to relive these memories or experience these memories and he's watching Mm -hmm. and he's, he's uh, acknowledging the emotions behind it, processing those in his own way and showing them in his own way. And what I thought of, I've never done what I'm about to talk about, but I've, I've uh, heard about it and, I don't know, studied it more than I guess some people, but there's a lot of, um, and you and I were actually talking about this ironically before we, we came on, but psychotropic, um, therapy, right. Using psycho, um, you know, using psilocybin or ayahuasca, MDMA, things like that to help process through, um, trauma, traumatic events. And this really this felt like that. Because what I understand is in those experiences, um, it allows you to re-enter your memory of that mm-hmm. trauma, that experience, but separated from the emotion. So you can observe it emotionally, pick up on more stuff, and then you can come out of that and through through psychotherapy and talk therapy, work through to resolve it. And I felt like that's what was happening for Jack and for us, right? Like we had this opportunity to observe what happened and we weren't connected, right? It was just, we're observing Mm -hmm. what happened. We acknowledge the emotion tied to it, but we didn't necessarily, just like Energy Jack, we didn't feel or process that emotion. Right. And what that led to that I just loved was this vulnerable honest communication between fake Jack and his ex-wife, Sarah, where he's just going through what happened, not having actually experienced it firsthand. And they're having a healing conversation around this. They're intimately connecting their vulnerable selves and saying the things they should have said, right? In a perfect world as they were processing through this, they, they shared real emotion I love that this episode, this show was able to take the construct that it has created, the lore, the science, the whatever. And in like the sixth or seventh episode, hand us this just effing heavy, deep episode that hits so, so hard. Get a Star Trek reference in here. The one thing I got was when, so Energy Jack Mm -hmm. tells uh, Real Jack that his son, Charlie, still is still there in him, right? In his heart. Yeah, yeah. And and he's telling him as as, as he does this, I wanted, you were hurt. I hurt you. And I wanted to heal what I hurt. Yeah. But in touching you, I found that your real pain was in the past. You couldn't exist here because you were existing there. That is not linear. (laughs) It's totally Cisco and Jennifer, right? When the prophets Mm -hmm. are just like, you're not here, you're back here. Mm -hmm. And that's how trauma works, right? We live in that. And Mm -hmm. we didn't, we weren't so as keen on that back in 97. This episode did a beautiful job of showing that. My last thought on, on this big piece, it's huge. Energy Jack says, Charlie's still here. He's inside you. But I've never, I've never shared what I'm about to share with anybody outside my therapist before. But I think it's appropriate right now, and I feel, I feel safe here with thousands of people <laughs> hearing it. But uh, I'm, I'm experiencing some mental health issues. And uh, not too long ago, I was in, I was in a bit of a crisis. And I was having, I was having suicidal ideations as part of that. 
asking myself questions, right? Like, what does it even matter? Mm-hmm. People die all the time and life goes on. Does it even matter? What are we doing here? What's the point? That's having a really hard time, as you do when you're in that place where you're thinking that you can't, it's not logical, it's not reasonable. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to apply reason to it, and I was that's just making it worse. My birthday came by, and my wife got me the perfect birthday present. She didn't know it. She didn't know how perfect it was. I mean, she did at the surface level. But what it showed me was what came out here. So what she got me were, um, gosh, and it's awesome. I'm wearing my Neil Peart shirt right now, the drummer from Rush. She got me a pair of drumsticks that were autographed by him, and they're certified and the whole thing. He yep. died back in 2020, what started, um, stopped touring back in 2015, but he, my hero, right? Like so much. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is the perfect present. And I remember having a moment where, I think I was actually taking a shower at the time and I just smile. I had this big smile and I'm just like, I love that she thought of this and she found it and did the work to get these to me. And I had this realization that this is why living is important because he did a thing. He signed this back in 2015. So he did a thing eight, nine years ago. Mm Mm-hmm based on work that he'd been doing you know, for 40 years before that, that now in a time where he is gone and has been gone for a long time, mm-hmm. in that moment, he, through my wife, was able to show me the value of life because mm-hmm. he impacted me after he was gone. He's mm-hmm. gone, but he was still here, right? Like there was this mm-hmm. moment of connection that shined a light for me. And I had this realization that, we don't only live for ourselves, mm, but we live for go. the people around us and the people we don't yeah. even know yep. that we're influencing for these things. And when Energy Jack said that, Charlie's still here. He's here, right? And he's putting mm-hmm. his hand on his chest. Like that's what it showed me. Charlie died and it was tragic and it was horrible. And this is a thing that happens to this day, right? Mm-hmm. This playing with his dad's gun. Right. Cause yep. I mean, who, what, what young boy didn't want to do that, you know, and the worst thing possible happened and they blame themselves and it's awful, but his life has that spark that lives on in Jack and Sarah, others. Heck in that moment, like, I mean, he impacted a whole bunch of people. His grandpa. Yeah. yeah. It's so many. That was, I mean, that was awesome too. I mean, the, the I, I loved how Jack, Energy Jack went in and was talking about Charlie in the present tense. You know, I need to find him. I need to do this. Mm-hmm. And the father-in-law, right, grandpa, didn't miss a beat. He's like, yeah, he is still, you know, yep, I can almost hear him laughing at my stupid joke. Yep. You know, and that whole thing that when they're gone, they're, they're still there. There's stuff about this episode that's within the lore of Stargate that's cool interesting the tilk stuff wanting to see the world is neat the concept of these crystals and the energy and the lives being there is interesting this is one of the, i think this is like the first truly alien species we've seen but brent the reason this episode is never going to leave me is like it showed it validated for me what i have learned is one of the strongest values of life So Jeff, I'm I'm supposed to come in here and discuss what does this show talk about? What does this show mean? What is the, what is the message of the show? Uh, you just did it. This is this is a five Chevron show. This yeah. is a five Chevron episode all the way through. I I rate these on a scale of zero to five Chevrons, based on how strong the message is. This message is replete from beginning to end. Take take whatever message you want out of this. How do you deal with guilt? And I I'm, I really don't want to say the phrase move on. Yeah. I don't know, especially when dealing with trauma and stuff like that, that you ever move on. But to to pull the Star Trek reference and write off of yours, but how do you live not there anymore? Yeah. But move on. Like like how do you how do you carry that with you? Um I have criticized this show. Uh, not this episode, but I mean this show, Stargate SG-1, twice now for presenting a great idea 
but then not mm. doing anything with it through the rest of the episode. Here, I felt like they presented a very poignant topic, and they didn't talk about it, but they just showed us. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there, there is no argument to present here. There's no like, okay, here's this one side of it over here, and here's this other side of it over there, as is with most to topics. This is just the fallout uh, of what's going on. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, this episode is is very clear about uh, pain. You know, the energy Jack, his whole thing. I, like, I I loved. It. He said, um, he said, I hurt you. And then I went to heal you. And when I did that, I looked in your mind and I saw that you were a warrior. Don't I've, I've honestly never picked up on this until watching it right now. He said, I saw you were a warrior and I was afraid, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, I tried to heal you from where I had hurt you. Right? Like I'm afraid of you because look what's happened. The last time the ghoul were here, I saw warrior. I'm afraid, but I'm going to try to heal you. And what I realized when I looked inside your mind, was it wasn't your physical pain. Your deepest pain was this other thing. So I thought maybe I could heal that. Why would he do that? Because then maybe this warrior, he doesn't have to be afraid of him anymore. Mm -hmm. what, why is Energy Jack doing this whole thing? So that he can, not that he can just heal Jack, but he can heal Jack so that they don't have to be afraid anymore. Yeah. The crystal people, the whatever's left of the crystal folk, they don't have to be afraid or they can win a friend. You know, like even to this 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 guy who, you know, they the crystalline people themselves, let's talk about them. They have experienced their own trauma. Let's set Jack's yeah. piece aside. They they're living their lives, they're doing their thing. The gold come in and shoot them all to hell. Basically genocide them. Exactly. Now, did they realize that they were a life form back then? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Did what? It doesn't matter. Like really bad trauma. This this crystalline folk, like they're living out of fear. When 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 uh, Sam and and Daniel and them are talking to the the blue crystal, like well, why didn't you talk to us before? And they said because we were scared, fear. Mm -hmm. You know what? What is amazing is when this energy being what when he acts in spite of his fear, not because of it, you know, uh, it, it just, it's amazing what can happen. Um, now Jeff on a, on a production level, on a, on a real world type situation, um, obviously the character of Jack O'Neill dealing with the fallout of his son, how do you go from stoic, whatever kind of Jack to snarky, humor filled right you know guy they needed an episode where jack was able to deal with that so he could move on and, and sort of, and this sort of really filled that purpose in the overall narrative the overall story was this is jack finally getting a chance to deal with you know uh what happened to his kid so that richard dean anderson can take the character and go with it wherever he wants to Make because it this 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 piece is is now done um, like that's, that's a little bit of the, of the, the piece there, but I mean, his wife, you know, I found another, just, just his wife says, you know, listen, when Charlie killed himself uh, accidentally, when that happened, you didn't talk to me. You pulled away from me. I needed you to come in and say, Je I mean, Jeff, to what you just said a second ago, that other people need us. It does. It does matter. Jeff, I'm so glad you never, you know, you never acted on that um, because we need you. We need Jeff Aiken's voice. I need Jeff Aiken in my life. You know what I mean? Like, like my life has been so much more fun and has been so enriched by your presence in my life, my friend. I'm speaking to you, not to them out there. I'm speaking to you. Thank you. My life. Now, I, I'm not, I can't speak for everybody else, but I can just speak from my own personal experience. My life has been enhanced by you and continues to be enhanced by you. And, and I'm, uh, I, I'm so glad that you're here. But he pulled away. And in, in pulling away, it wound up destroying not just his son, but his relationship then with his wife, you know? 
what I what I loved though was when the chips were down, when there was an emergency happening, and we saw real Jack running through the hospital and he sees Sarah for the first time. And this is real Jack and real Sarah. And he's like, You, are you okay? His concern was immediately for her. Like, this is still a person whom he clearly still has feelings for, yeah. emotions for. She clearly feels the same to him. She's trying to figure out, like, what's going on? Who are you? Oh, this is the Jack I know. She's kind of, yeah. he's like, look, I'm going to take care of you. Are you, like, he he hugs her, he kisses her, he pulls her in, you know. And then and then we fast forward to the end, and he hugs her, and, and she's like, we were great. And he says, we were the greatest. And yeah. I'm just sitting here, and, and if I could pull a lesson out of this, that in the face of tragedy, you have two choices. You can either move towards each other or we can move away from each other. Choose moving towards each other because we're better together. Jeff, I'm not going to tell you that we're going to, that all of a sudden we're going to see Jack reunite with his wife and this is going to be a story point going forward. I'm not going to tell you that. Um, but there, there is a, a coming to terms. Maybe that's better. A coming to terms, not a, not a getting over, but a coming to terms. There's a coming to terms with everything here in dealing with Jack. Um, yeah. And you hear what, what does Sam say? What did Daniel say? Yeah. He doesn't really ever talk about this. Yeah. He never talks about this. He doesn't let people in. He doesn't let people know yet. He's keeping that box in his locker filled with all this, with his wedding ring, with the pictures of Charlie, with the pictures of him and Sarah and the family, like, uh, and not to live there, to live here. That it's a five Chevron episode, Jeff. Totally five Chevron episode. I feel like it did a great job showing us there's a term called pendulation, right? And that's really like a pendulum where you either move away from the the feeling or the situation where you lean in and move into it. And the natural reaction a lot of us have is to back off and move away. We're not in a, most of us don't live in a society that rewards or reinforces vulnerability mm. and sitting in emotions. You know, we just, we just don't do that. But what we saw is that because they didn't do that, we saw the you know the end of the marriage that happened between Jack and Sarah. But on the other side, we had Energy Jack who leaned in. Mm -hmm. I'm scared of you. You might hurt me like these other people did, but I'm going to come towards you and I'm going to try and help you. And he provided real healing for both yeah. Jack and Sarah through that. So we see that, right? Whether you don't back away, come into it. And I think and the I'm other sorry, piece, Jeff, if I could interrupt. And what happened because of that? This guy that he was scared of is now his rescuer and taking him back home. Yeah. God. Every, mm. Literally everyone is in a better place because he leaned in. He came, tw yeah. he walked towards what he was afraid of. Yeah. What was scary? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not to say walk towards everything you're afraid of. You know the people, the things that you're scared of. There's times that's mm -hmm. not safe. You shouldn't do that. But walk into the emotion, walk into the feeling, the experience. Lean so into it. Experience so it. And it'll suck. So good. right. I mean, dude was blowing up. Mm -hmm. But it's better for everybody. Jeff, I have a confession to make. I this is not one of my favorite episodes of Stargate. Yeah. When I usually do my rewatches of Stargate, this is one of the ones that I skip. Emancipation, First Commandment, and I usually skip Cold Lazarus. It's not because I don't like Cold Lazarus. It's that I don't like Cold Lazarus. Mm -hmm. It's so emotional. Like, it's so heavy. I especially, you know, my first experience with this show was well before I was ever a parent. So I don't have that as a point of reference. Emotional, heavy episode is not what I'm here for, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know that weird thing in podcasting, though, where you go into an episode, by the time you're done with your discussion, the recording of the discussion, your opinion changes and you have a much higher respect for a show? That's me with this one. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm going to go back and watch this episode a whole bunch of times because I'm not. There's nothing feel good about this episode very much. But I do have to say, I think my respect for this episode after all these years, my 47th time, 48th time watching the show, um has grown quite significantly because I had to look at it through this lens. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you get to experience it that way. You know, I think about over on Babylon five, there were episodes like confessions and lamentations that were mm -hmm. amazing episodes that I will never watch again. Right. 
it's <laughs> it's, right. it's not good. Right. But uh, but yeah, no, this is this this um yeah for for a show that you really had set up for me in terms of it's fun episodic thing. We'll we'll look for the sci fi messages, but there aren't going to be any. This was near the epitome of not only a sci fi message, but also it was a hundred percent show. There was no tell in this, and because they showed it, holy crud, what a journey. Mm -hmm. this took us on. And so the one piece I'm going to take out of this and apply in my life outside of that leaning into it, live in the moment, be here now with the people that are here and now that's what we have to, what's what we have. And that's what ultimately energy Jack did is he brought Jack and Sarah into the now where they were talking about now they weren't necessarily Mm -hmm. just talking about Charlie now. And then it brought, Jack and energy Jack together in the now Mm -hmm. to go and do the thing. Uh, Super powerful. And you got to imagine that um, SG one as a team is going to be a little closer after this whole experience as well. Yeah. Because definitely Daniel, Sam and Tilk were all standing right there when energy Charlie showed up and, and all of that happened. So, um, all right, Jeff. So I've already given my, this is a five Chevron episode all the way through you, my friend though, are are tasked with the unenviable spot of getting to to rank this episode to put it on our list of rankings as we're going through the season. Jeff, it is up to you. Where do you place this episode? Our current rank, top five because this is where we are is the Broken Divide, Children of Gods, Children of the Gods. I'm sorry, uh, the Enemy Within, First Commandment, and then Emancipation. Where do you place this one? It's an interesting question right now with it is you know we've talked about this ranking really being about my enjoyment of an episode um you know what i want to watch it again things like that because i'm in a place where i'm very focused on my mental health and i'm doing a lot of practices and things like that to uh to help build that i'm in a different place watching this than it might have been if we watched this you know a couple months ago or a couple months from now and so I did not enjoy this episode, but I love this episode. I'm going to make this our number one so far. (gasps) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think you, you say a thing frequently that I think Uh applies here. If you can make me feel a thing. Yeah. You're doing your job. This episode made me feel a lot of things. This, uh, you know, listen, I enjoy the broken divide. I enjoy children of the gods. Yeah. Uh, I, even the enemy within, I, I could kind of take it or leave mm-hmm. it, but you're right. This is the first episode that's made me feel anything. And as an episode, as a structure, as what they're doing, it, it's fantastic. I still don't ever want to watch this episode again. Agreed. Agreed. Right? <laughs> Uh, but, but listen, it, it's like a scale. It's the, okay. Do I want to watch it versus quality of episode? Like, mm-hmm. and the, it's, it's those two things when they combine, I think usually what I want to watch it again tends to like all the episodes quality wise tend to be very, fairly even. Yeah. You know, so it's just, which one do I want to watch again? But sometimes you get an episode like this, that it's the quality pop. of what they're doing in it is so much higher. So I get it. I guess I get it. Well, folks, uh, that's actually going to do it for us. That's going to put a bow on cold Lazarus. Jeff, this is another one of those episodes, man. You go into something like this. You're like, yeah, there's not really much to it. And oh, it turns out it's going to be one of our longer. Right. Longer here we are episodes. an hour and a half in. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, Jeff, would you care to know what we're watching next time? Yeah, let's hear it. Next time we get together, we are going to be, oh, I cannot wait for you uh, to tell me what you think this episode is going to be. Here's the title, The Knox. Can you spell that? N-O-X. Yes, folks, we are watching The Knox. Next. There is a Knox in a box. <laughs> Does the Knox wear its socks? Good, good uh, luck. I have, good luck with this. I have this no one. idea. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to say. There's going to be this is another uh 
so far up until this episode, we're seeing uh, displaced humans, right? That the Gould have, have moved around. We saw mm -hmm. aliens here. Yep. I think the Nox are going to be other aliens. This is going to be an alien they run, alien D group they run into. So not displaced humans. You're saying another new group of aliens? Yes. Okay. I think that's what this is going to be. Okay. Can you, do you want to get any more specific than just aliens? Jeez. You literally just went alien of, there'll be a new alien next week. You said this is uh -huh. an alien of the week episode. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, let's just get stupid specific here. You, oh. uh, yeah. This is going to be uh, like, this is going to be a, I'm going to say a reptilian alien race. Okay. That has interacted with the Gould. Uh -huh. And humans, there's humans here as well. Okay. In fact, these reptilian aliens, the Nox, are on this planet with humans. And the question is, like, they're in this Cold War stalemate thing. SG-1 is going to come in and they're going to have to determine, are the Nox a true threat or could they be allies? You just completely pulled that out of your rear end, my friend. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see next time here on stargate sg1 for the first time thank you guys so much for joining us don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcast leave us a rating and review and please share this show with somebody that you know who loves stargate sg1 or who like jeff is falling in love with this incredible series for the first time so all that said until next time folks we appreciate you and we will catch you hey brent hey jeff do you think I could take this out into the world? I really just don't feel like it's that safe. I literally, I was just like, maybe I just don't even make the joke on this one. <laughs> Can't do it. Not on this one. Yeah can do it yeah uh thank you guys so much for joining us you're amazing club 65 jeff sharing the heavy stuff tonight man i did yeah, yeah. i didn't know if i was gonna do it or not like as that yeah. scene was happening i'm like oh this is what it's bringing do i do it and you know what as podcasters as broadcast journalists that's what you do i got a confession to make i have the bug bites right yeah this particular one up here has been itching all show and i've just been trying not to be like this the whole time I'm like, <laughs> you'd be scratching i had this but like dry i just i just a coughing. second ago like i have the camera like i like I have me in the camera here and i just went up to reach it and i reached on the other side of my head i was like oh no sh I, like i i can feel it but i was watching my <laughs> for the record oh my god this is i see this on the other side right like right Right. Like when we try and high five each other, I want to do it this way because that's where right. you are. Right. But I got to do it. I got to go way. this way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's it. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here and stop being stupid. Uh, thank you guys so much. We'll join you guys uh, next time for the Knox. Jeff, let's just record that episode right now. What do you do say? It. Awesome. Better wear that same shirt next time. I know. <laughs>